luck. You have 30 seconds, Alan. All right, so zero trust, first of all, is real. There's a lot of people out there that say it's a bunch of marketing BS, and there is absolutely a world of marketing BS around zero trust. That doesn't change the fact that it has integral, complementary, comprehensive principles that are simple, easy to adhere to, and have been around since literally 2010. John Kindervog, an analyst at Forrester, invented the term zero trust and outlined seven principles that divines, define it in 2010. Later that same year, Google came out with what they called Beyond Corp, which was their first Woo! committed statement to, to enable zero trust for themselves as a corporation. Flash forward a few years, we've got NIST 800-207. We've got the UK's National Cybersecurity Center. We have got national standards out there for zero trust. And they gonged you, 30 seconds. You get 30 seconds, I gave All you right. 45. That's okay, that means you Governments stop. Governments are slow. No, 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 that means you stop talking and you sit down, but you're gonna have plenty of chances, okay? Let's give him some slack, he's wearing a boot. He told me it wasn't a prop. I'm sure it wasn't, okay? Mark, you got 30 seconds and I will let you know. Start the clock, there you go. Thank you. Uh, zero trust architecture. What is it? If you go out today, Google your phones right now, put in pillars of zero trust. First page, three pillars, five pillars, seven pillars. What is it? No one really knows. Least, <laughs> least privilege, right? So if we define it down, right, core concept, we'll talk about moving from implicit trust to explicit trust. Novel concept, right? Nobody's thought about that over the last 20 years of cybersecurity. <laughs> right? And we're done. All right. I think the rebuttals are going to amp it up. All right. I need more energy from you, and I need time from you, okay? You've got 30 seconds in rebuttal. Go. All right. So who can tell me exactly and precisely what DevOps is with crystal clarity in such a way that everyone else who does DevOps will agree with you what DevOps is? Nobody. Zero trust is the same thing, and that's okay. It's okay to adhere to the core tenets. It's okay to understand that fundamentally and philosophically, zero trust means zero trust. Okay. It means you treat every entity on your network, be it a user, be it a device, or be it a service, with suspicion. You identify, you verify integrity, and you establish constant monitoring after the fact to perpetually ensure that that state of integrity and that state of identity is continuing to be met. All right, all right. Yeah. All right. He figured it out. It took him one round, so give him credit. All right, Mark, you got 30 seconds in rebut. Will do. So intrinsic things in your environment exist that will not allow zero trust to occur, right? How many of you run legacy applications that are business critical, that are unpatchable? Unpatchable, right? Cannot be touched, cannot be removed, have to be played into. Open a port, I can crack you. That's simple, right? So you cannot have zero trust in an environment with things that are intrinsically unpatchable. All right, Alan, you got 30 seconds in rebut. Let him have it. All right, any EDR product you purchase guarantees you 90-something percent coverage. Does that mean once you've rolled it out that you haven't done an EDR deployment? No. You're never going to have 100% coverage with any cybersecurity solution. That's okay. You wrap. You put compensating controls in place and you do zero trust everywhere you possibly can. Certificate exchange, identity exchange, wrapping it in a firewall that validates at an IP basis and simply doing some wrappers. There are a million and one things you can do to upscale the integrity, verify the identity, and monitor to ensure that the things that are happening are the things you want to happen. All right. You got your work cut out for you, Mark. You got 30 seconds. Let them have it. It's simple. Humans. Right? All of you are successful out there. This front row is all driving really nice cars. Give me your keys. I'll drive your car for a couple hours. Humans are, cannot be explicitly trust. Look at what's happened with the DOD. Right? They have more money, more resources, more capabilities than you will ever have, and they still exfiltrated information because of the human. You cannot. Uh all right, I like it, I like it. The energy's picking up, it's good. That's what I like to see. Okay, now comes 
the fun part. Sarah? No, 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 I hear you. I hear you. Sarah, you got the first question. Let them have it. Okay, my question is, assuming that we can reach zero trust, how do you justify to me spending dollars on zero trust security instead of where the business needs it? Because everybody knows IT enables the business, right? Specious argument. Go ahead, you go first. Speci you, got, you, got, you got 15 seconds right, and then he can rebut. It's a specious question because if zero trust is properly established, that is 1,000% what the business has wanted you to do as the CISO the entire time. Your goal is to give them real security where it matters and where their business processes lie. A proper zero trust architecture satisfies that need. All right, Mark, you got 15 per seconds. Right. Just because you can't be an Olympic swimmer doesn't mean you shouldn't swim, right? Just because you can't reduce all risk and secure your environment completely doesn't mean you shouldn't monitor risk and shut down risk. All right, you got a 15 second rebuttal, then he gets to rebut, and we go on to the second question. So, fundamentally and philosophically, back to the human argument about the keys, back to this idea that the business may or may not understand zero trust, it's irrelevant because what we're trying to do as cyber practitioners, our one fundamental goal is to figure out what's most valuable, to protect what's most valuable, and to do it in the most cost efficient way possible. That's it, that's our charter. Zero trust is an architecture, that aims at that goal, and if it's implemented within those confines, you've nailed it. All right, Mark, you get a rebuttal, you get a rebuttal. Again, just because you can't achieve it doesn't mean you shouldn't try to achieve it. The goal is reduction of risk, right? We do things today that we implicitly cannot achieve. Look at data loss prevention programs, right? But you still have to do it, right? You still have to reduce risk. That's really your charter, reduce right. risk, let the business operate. Okay, so the next way we do it is a jump ball with the other four refs. And Pat has got a serious, you're itching for a question, aren't you? Yeah. Go ahead. I, I, I'm like super confused because it sounds like they're on the same side now. Yeah. And, and I thought I heard early on that it's too hard so don't try. So is it too hard don't try or is it just because it's hard we should try? All right, since he said that is the last thing, let's have you go first, yep. and then you can respond. Never said too hard, don't try. I said implicit, you'll never reach the full goal, right? There are too many things in your environments that will allow you never to completely secure it. There is no such thing as zero reduction of risk, right? Doesn't exist. You always have risk. You open your world to the internet, you have risk. You open your world to humans, you have risk. You want zero risk, take your environments, close them off, don't allow humans to touch them. Don't expose it to the internet. Okay, Alan. All right, I can't say where it was I worked, but let's just say that when COVID hit, I worked for a company that had 50,000 employees. And when COVID hit and it was announced that every one of those employees was about to scatter to the four winds and go work from home, our cybersecurity team picked up the phone, called the CIO and said, what can we do to help? We're already set up on this end. We had zero trust. Okay. All right. No one said, no one said this is for little children. You get, the, you get 15 seconds and then he closes out and then we vote. I've, I've heard the zero trust argument. I've had plenty of people tell me they have zero trust. Haven't been able not to crack one of them. One open port, one vulnerability, one bad application, one bad human, you'll get cracked. How many of you know Admiral Rogers from the NSA? Given enough time, money, and resources, anybody can be cracked. His statement, right? And it's true everywhere. So yes, should you attempt to do it? Reduce risk? Absolutely, right? Will you achieve 100% success? Never. Okay, Alan, you got the last 15 seconds, and then we're gonna see what, we, we see what they think. All right, so what I just heard was an argument that we should all just give up and go home. Zero trust, cybersecurity, it's all the same. You're gonna have that one vulnerability. You're gonna have that one exploit. You're gonna have that one guy that leaks the data. So let's just give up on all of it and go home, right? That's not a good argument against one specific strategy. All right, so this is how we do it. This is how we do it. Believe it or not, these are really cherished little, uh, little prizes here. These little Digital Fight Club logo fuzzy dice boxing gloves. All right, and the way we're gonna find out who gets one is by hearing from you, okay? So I'm gonna tell you who we're cheering for, we're gonna do it twice, and we're gonna see what the level is, okay? So please give it up for Alan 
Alfred, if you want, he was the winner. All right, all right, that was pretty epic. That was pretty epic. Now let's give it up for Mark Mahovich. Well, that was quantitatively closer than I thought it would be, but the winner is Alan Alford. Woo! Congratulations.